Halloween costumes aren't okay, according to the CBC. Halloween stores are starting to get the appropriation message. However, offensive costumes can still be found, says extremely white and pasty looking indigenous social media activist. You know, Rhiannon, just saying, maybe a couple of your ancestors might have been bleached. Might have been bleached. Halloween costume stores seem to be getting the message about cultural appropriation, but some are still stocking offensive costumes. <laughs> There's no such thing as an offensive costume unless you're some fat hairy guy in leather ass chaps. Chippewa woman Alicia Big Canoes. <laughs> Isn't that the name of a porn site as well? <laughs> that Indian woman has some big canoes. <laughs> Social media campaign, I am not a costume, has been spreading awareness for several years about how costumes depicting indigenous stereotypes during Halloween negatively affect First, Nation, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Well, if you want to stop this stereotype, I don't think the best uh, name for your social media campaign is Big Canoes. <laughs> okay, let's check out this I'm not a costume hashtag. Oh yeah, I can see people are taking this real seriously. I can see why it's not trending. I feel a bit anxious around Halloween, especially knowing that children see these images of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis children see, still see themselves being romanticized in these costumes, she said. The horror of being romanticized. <laughs> Some costume stores are doing their best to make sure their costumes are inclusive and don't appropriate from indigenous and other cultures. Well, that's not very inclusive now, is it? People want Pocahontas costumes. People want Mexican ponchos. People want stuff that really isn't appropriate. Mexican ponchos aren't appropriate? You're a lunatic. People need to realize that this is in fact culture, not costume, Sam B said. I think it's really important that people do not wear for a costume or for fun something that is from a culture that is not their own because it dehumanizes that culture, she added. Not all stores agree. Well, I'm glad there's at least some sanity left in Canada. In Peterborough, Ontario, a staff member from the local costume shop, K&C Costumes, confirmed by phone the shop carries Native American costumes for men, women, and children. The monsters. CBC called another store in Vancouver to inquire whether it, it was stocking indigenous costumes. We sell everything. We're a costume store, said the manager of the Vancouver costume store. Franchise's Choice, a pop-up location for different spirit Halloween location in downtown Toronto, displayed no indigenous costumes on the walls. The store manager who said she had been told by her head office not to identify herself to media, I wonder why CBC, maybe because of your witch hunts, confirmed to CBC the store would not be stocking its shelves with indigenous based costumes this season. You know, we're paying for this, right? The CBC is like the BBC, it's government funded. Our tax dollars are going to the CBC so they can phone costume stores on Halloween to make sure they're not selling cowboys and Indians costumes. Another staff member told CBC the store had trouble in the past with displays of indigenous based costumes being repeatedly torn down. <laughs> Spirit Halloween's head office, head office was not available for comment by phone. It did not respond to emails requested by CBC about the costumes funded in the Kitchener location. <laughs> I wonder why. Indigenous protesters made to pay 1.5k for stickering deeply offensive costumes. They're not a deeply offensive costumes. But maybe the CBC headline should have been Indigenous terrorists made to pay $1.5,000 for terrorizing local costume store. Because that's technically what it is. Oh well, that's not going to go over well at all, is it? A 17-year-old found six full costumes based on indigenous stereotypes that left her, left her both enraged and heartbroken. <laughs> so, the costumes were labeled with the names Native American Princess, <laughs> Indian Warrior, and Noble Warrior. 
But Resmere said that the worst offender, reservation royalty, left a particularly bad impression on her. No native child wishes to spend their life on a reservation that imprisoned their ancestors, and yet they have no choice. They boil their drinking water, they walk 35 kilometers to get to school, they watch their friends, family, community members fade away into alcoholism, abuse, and suicide. This is the way of the Canadian reservation, said Resmere. There is no reservation royalty. Well, maybe they should call it casino royalty. I mean, all that money's got to be going somewhere. I mean, it's tax-free. But I like to point out that things like alcoholism, that's a choice. Alcohol isn't cheap in Canada. It's expensive to be an alcoholic. I hate to break it to you, but uh, Native Americans, they have the same rights and freedoms as every other Canadian. In fact, they have one more right. They have the right not to pay taxes. I wish I had that right, but I don't have indigenous privilege, I guess. Safety issue. The cultural appropriation of indigenous cultures carries with it the weight of colonization and discrimination, said Pig Canoe. <laughs> I love that name because it can work as a male or female porn star. You know, Big Canoe shows off her big canoes or Big Canoe shows his big canoe. Adding it makes indigenous pe people feel unsafe in their traditional homelands. I was a bunch of little kids dressing up as cowboys and Indians one night of the year making you feel unsafe. It's very upsetting to not always feel safe in these homelands where our ancestors have been for 10,000 years plus because there are these sexualized images of our women. At night, we don't feel safe going around. It is very disrespectful. It's hurtful and harmful. We need to be valid members of society, she added. Listen, if you want to be a valid member of society, you're going to have to start with not being a detriment to society. If Indian Halloween costumes are causing you this much stress and anguish, then it's not a safety issue. It's a mental health issue, and you should probably see somebody about that. This is why you're fake news, CBC. This is why people call you the CNN of Canada. I don't like the idea of my tax dollars going for you to phone stores on Halloween to make sure they're not selling so-called offensive costumes, because anybody with an ounce of common sense doesn't give a shit. Walmart Canada pulls indigenous Halloween costumes from website. <laughs> well, well, at least they just pulled it from the website and not off the shelves. <laughs> Retail giant will take a harder look at cultural sensitivity guidelines, CBC Toronto has learned. <laughs> well, I wonder who pressured them into that, CBC. Walmart Canada has pulled a number of Halloween costumes from its website, including Native Princess and Chief, and will begin a consultation process to revisit its guidelines to address cultural sensitivity, CBC Toronto has learned. CBC Toronto was investigating a complaint about an Afro wig for sale at a Greater Toronto Area Walmart and came up with several indigenous costumes on its site. <laughs> they're, they're not going to be happy until everything is banned. You can't even have Afro wigs. And apparently this is a win for the progressive media machine. Oh, surprise, surprise. Okay, let's see what other crap the CBC can spit out about this racist, depressive holiday. Your kids costumes matter. How not to be a jerk this Halloween. But the topic of costumes and appropriation is a heated one in Canada conversation. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be. With many parents asserting their rights for their kids to dress wherever they want. Well, that, that is their right. It's not illegal, nor it should be, to wear a Pocahontas costume. These debates are exacerbated by costume shops that sell afros and headdresses as costumes. There's nothing wrong with that. And by mega companies like Disney, whose beloved film characters often become any given year's costume of choice. Well, that's because Disney is racist. So here are seven things I'd urge you to consider when you costume shop this October. Okay. What is cultural appropriation? <laughs> You know, you idiots do realize you can't have multiculturalism and cultural appropriation in the same society, right? I mean, they, they'll work against each other. When we talk about cultural appropriation at Halloween, it might be helpful to think of it as cultural misappropriation. <laughs> it's when we pick and choose elements of a certain culture to suit our needs. In this case, wearing them as a costume. This is especially problematic when white people borrow from people of color. The reason why it doesn't work both ways, <laughs> Of course it doesn't because you're a racist. It's because white people are not discriminated against for our hair, our clothes, and our skin. <laughs> We're not? Unless of course you're applying for a job at the CBC. You remember this CBC? You remember what happened with this? If you have to ask, what's the big deal, it's just Halloween, then recognize that you probably benefit from a level of privilege. <laughs> or you're just sane. 
<laughs> privilege is not a pejorative. Let me say it again. Privilege, white privilege, and male privilege are not pejoratives. <laughs> of course, it's, it's, it's male privilege, too. Okay, next. Well, it may not feel like a big deal to white people. <laughs> Some damn whiteies. It's just a costume. It's triggering and painful of people of color. <laughs> Listen, if an Afro wig or an Indian costume is triggering and painful for you, get a life. Empathy is a beautiful thing to teach our kids. In my opinion, <laughs> So let's treat it as fact. Empathy is the most important emotion of all emotions. Put yourself in your fellow Canadian shoes. There are indigenous communities in this country that have gone without clean drinking water for years. Well, <laughs> move. Is it any wonder that they are dismayed seeing their culture misappropriated for the purpose of fun one night of the year when they're ignored by the same people the remaining 364? <laughs> yes, for the same reasons that somebody dressing as Benjamin Franklin isn't going to get offended. If you truly want to honor the culture of indigenous people, roll up your sleeves politically, become an advocate and an ally, and put away the costume headdress. <sighs> no. Being sensitive and politically correct are still good things. <laughs> Being politically correct has never been a good thing. <laughs> Donald Trump style politics has of late labeled political correctness and sensitivity scrooges of society. Well, <laughs> he's right on that one. But until we live in a post-racial utopia, <laughs> I am... <laughs> I'm scared to death of your post-racial utopia. It's probably going to look like something like George Orwell's 1948. I'll take political correctness and sensitivity every time. I bet you will, you crazy lunatic. That doesn't mean we should shut down conversation or that we're aware... That doesn't mean we should shut down the... That doesn't mean we should shut down the conversation or that we're adverse to different ideas and political opinions. That is, that's exactly what you do every time. That's, that is, that doesn't mean we shut down, <clears throat> that doesn't mean we shut down the conversation or that we're averse to different ideas or political, <clears throat> that doesn't mean we, <clears throat> that doesn't mean we shut down the conversation or that we're, a, a, that doesn't, <clears throat> That doesn't mean we shut down the conversation. <laughs> it's exactly what you do. Or that we're averse to different ideas or political opinions. <laughs> it's exactly... That doesn't mean we shut down the... That doesn't mean we shut down the conversation or that we're averse to different ideas. <laughs> that doesn't mean we shut down the conversation or... Aver <laughs> Fuck. That doesn't mean we shut down the conversation or that we're aware to different... <clears throat> That doesn't mean we shut down the conversation or that we're adverse to different ideas or political opinions. <laughs> That's what you do every single time. <laughs> and that doesn't mean you're a bad person for really wanting your child to have the Halloween of his or her dreams. <laughs> it's just crazy. But humility and the ability to learn from our mistakes, <laughs> wearing a Pocahontas costume or, or a poncho is not a mistake. And admit that we are wrong and wonderful things to model to our kids. <laughs> when are you going to admit that you're wrong? <sighs> because hopefully as a society, we're teaching our children to be better than we are. <laughs> you're not. You're really not. <laughs> Always defer to the perspective of people of color. <laughs> no. Why would I do that? I'm not looking through your SJW lenses. Having three biological sons, I'm white and my husband is black. <laughs> you mean this husband? The one that's been accused of spreading around anti-white propaganda? That one? <laughs> Does not make me an expert on this topic. And no matter how woke you think you are, if you are a white person, you aren't either. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> no one person speaks for their entire culture and opinions. <laughs> Apparently that's your job. Within a culture vary, sometimes within a wide spectrum, but in this situation, their insight matters more than yours, and that's okay. <laughs> No, it isn't, and no, it's not. You're not off the hook if you're dressing up as the character and not the culture. I'm not even going to bother reading this, because Disney's just full of a bunch of Nazi racists. When in doubt, just don't. Well, I'm going to send the same advice to you next time you want to write an article. <laughs>